Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 3 on maximizing your virtual music classroom. In our previous episodes, we talked about webcams and camcorders. If you haven't watched them already, I would highly recommend you do so, so as to familiarize yourself with the options out there. Without further ado, let's go on to our next topic, compact cameras. The most compact camera you already own is your smartphone. And smartphones have come a long way from the mediocre image quality devices they once were. So you might ask yourself, why should I buy a compact camera? Well, compact cameras have developed a lot too, and they are getting closer and closer to the quality you can expect from professional grade cameras, such as DSLR and mirrorless options. They are very small in size, so you can take them with you on your travels, and to a certain extent, you can even put them in your pocket. They have most of the features that DSLR cameras have, although for the lack of physical buttons and dials on them due to the small form factor, you might have to go through extra steps fiddling through the menus in order to select various functions. Because of this, Compact cameras are optimized for point and shoot, meaning to say the camera usually does a good job at intelligently choosing the right mode for you while shooting your photos and videos based on the lighting conditions and the specific scenes. Of course, due to their small form factor, compact cameras can't be said to be fully on par with DSLR and mirrorless options out there, and their sensor sizes are usually smaller as well as their lenses. Most of these lenses can be tucked away in the body when not in use to further enhance the slimness of the body. As they are non-interchangeable lenses, you are stuck with the lens that you get with the camera body itself. For example, with the case of the Fuji X100V, it comes with a fixed focal length of 23mm Meaning to say that if you want to get nearer or further from your subject, you physically have to move the camera. Apart from a few models, most compact cameras come with a zoom lens. So you may want to take that into consideration with your purchase. For example, if you want to take concert videos and your camera has to be situated a little bit further from the stage so as not to block the audience sitting in front of it, then you may want to consider a compact camera with a very large zoom range. Also to take note are the recording limitations. Although professional cameras do often have a recording limit of up to half an hour, compact cameras often have limits of far less. Some of them can only take, for example, only 10 minutes of video. So this is not ideal in a situation where you have to record longer pieces, or in some cases, maybe even a full concert. As is the case with all other cameras except webcams, please ensure that your camera comes with a HDMI port. We need the camera to be able to output its signal, so what the camera sees, through this HDMI port out to an adapter called a capture card, which will then convert the video signal to USB. We will then plug the USB into the computer and then the computer will automatically recognize the camera's video feed as a webcam, which we can then in turn select using Zoom or Skype or any of the other conferencing apps. Some compact cameras actually come already with a USB webcam feature built in. Please check your manufacturer's website for this. You may need to download additional software in order for the feature to work. If your camera is supported, then you're in luck. You wouldn't need an extra capture card and you can straight away plug your camera directly into the computer. Also a feature to consider is a USB powered option, meaning to say that you can power your camera via a USB cable. This is important if you want to take longer videos without worrying about the battery running out. Also to consider is an articulating screen. Some cameras flip their screens upwards. This is quite ideal in situations like vlogging, where you want to be still looking at the lens while being able to see yourself in the screen. With cameras like the Sony ZV-1, which has a fully articulating screen, the screen flips outwards to the side of the lens, 
So if you are vlogging and you are looking directly at the screen, your eyes will be seen to be not looking directly into the camera. This is a small trade-off in my opinion, and I still prefer a fully articulating screen because it gives you the most flexibility. So onto my recommendation on the best compact camera to buy. It is the Sony ZV-1. This little boy has so many features built into it, it almost defies the limitations that we expect from compact cameras altogether. Let's look at some of its features, shall we? The Sony ZV-1 comes in at around 800 US dollars at the time of this video. It is such a popular camera these days, especially for vloggers, that you will find dozens of videos on YouTube on every little feature that's crammed into this device. So I won't go into the specifics. However, here are some video-centric features to note. This camera has amazing autofocus tracking capabilities, which is so important, especially if you are moving from one subject to another. It has good image stabilization, probably not on par with bigger camera bodies and their in-body stabilization units. But if you turn the settings of the steady shot to active, you can take very, very decent handheld footage without jitter or shake. Just bear in mind that there is a crop factor. So for some people, especially if you're vlogging and you don't have very long hands, you might need to put your camera on a little tripod or monopod or selfie stick in order to be at a decent uh, range from your face. It has the required clean HDMI out, which means that it can output its video signal without all the overlay messages on the camera that you see on the screen itself. He has a very decent inbuilt microphone, much better and much larger than most microphones inbuilt into camera bodies of much more expensive and larger cameras. Have a look here. This entire thing over here is the microphone situated above the camera. However, with the microphone input port on the Sony ZV-1, you may plug in any external microphone with a 3.5 mm jack into the camera. Just make sure that you adjust the microphone levels accordingly in the settings. One really amazing feature of the Sony ZV-1 is that it has a rather hidden loophole in this recording time limit that most compact cameras have. By default, you can't record a very long video on this camera. But there is a setting in the menu called Auto Power Off Temperature. If you set that to high, the camera will allow you to record for much longer period of time before shutting down. I've seen some reviews where they tried to test how long it could record, and some even got up to an hour, which is pretty amazing for a camera of this size. So this is a little trick that you guys can do in order to record longer videos. It also has a USB webcam feature built in. You just have to connect a USB cable from your camera to the computer and make sure you download the Sony Imaging H webcam app. Just bear in mind that it does not transmit audio, so you will need an external mic plugged into your PC or Mac. This camera also has a USB power option. Although it comes with a micro USB port, which is said to be old fashioned for today's standards, I think it is very convenient it has this port because we all have USB cables lying around and chances are the longer USB cables you have are going to be micro USB just because they're cheaper and they've been around for the longest time. I've tried so many USB cables and they all seem to work to power the camera. Unlike my Fuji, which requires a certain kind of USB-C cable and a PD power charger in order to actually sufficiently charge the camera's battery. With the Sony, it's not very fussy at all. I even tried powering it with a super long micro USB cable that I bought really cheap, meant for security cameras. And I just used a normal phone charger, and it worked perfectly fine. So that's good news there. A cool accessory of the Sony ZV-1 is that you can purchase a Bluetooth hand grip. Let's have a look at it, shall we? 
This Bluetooth hand grip connects automatically as your camera turns on. And it provides functions such as zooming in, starting and stopping recordings, and also a customizable button here to set a setting at will. It's so easy to mount the camera on top. Let me show you how it's done. You just fit the screw in. I'm trying to show, there we go. And then you twist this little wheel over here. There you go, camera is mounted. You can then use this as a grip and you can adjust the tilt with this button here. And really cool, if you wish to put your camera down a table, this grip can transform into a mini tripod. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So that's it guys for today's episode on compact cameras and my Sony ZV-1 recommendation. In our next episode, we'll be talking about DSLR and mirrorless cameras. And in subsequent episodes thereafter, we will cover then how to connect your camera to the computer. Have a good week ahead guys. Do subscribe to my channel and click the like button if you really enjoyed the video and look forward to the next one. Bye.